Hi there, my name is Terry White and I work on the Creative Cloud team here at Adobe. Streaming has become an increasingly important way for us to engage and interact with our users from all over the world. We think it is a fantastic way to share knowledge and show cool things. I've created this series of videos to get anyone started with streaming and sharing their knowledge, passion, and talent online. I hope you will find this series useful. All right, let's talk getting started to live streaming from your desktop computer. Of course, live streaming has taken off by storm over the last couple of years, but now it's gone beyond just live streaming from a handheld or mobile device. On most of the major platforms, you can now live stream from your desktop computer. So the four major platforms that we'll be spending most of the time talking about are YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And of course, they all have their advantages and disadvantages, so let's cover a few. Let's start off with Twitter. Twitter actually originally uh, started live streaming by acquiring a company called Periscope, and they're still tightly inter intertwined right now, so it's not just 100% Twitter, there's still some Periscope involved. However, Periscope is integrated into Twitter so that now you can go live from a mobile device uh, directly in Twitter. And of course, if you go live on Periscope, it shows up in, in your Twitter feed to your viewership. However, they've recently opened up live streaming from other devices uh, using what's called the Periscope Producer Program. This is something that you go apply for. Um, and once you apply, which they usually approve everyone, once you apply, um, you get approved usually about 24 hours later. And from that point on, you'll then be able to set up live streaming in something other than your phone. Each broadcast can be announced via a custom tweet. And these uh, tweets are uh, basically you set up your description and what you're going to be talking about. And then once you hit uh, go live, uh, that tweet is sent. Uh, broadcasters or broadcasts no longer expire after 24 hours like they did back in the early days of Periscope. And so they will be uh, there consumable uh, in your Twitter feed. But of course, as your feed gets older, the videos themselves may not be as discoverable. And keep in mind that many Twitter users use um, their, their, they consume tweets and videos on a mobile device. So therefore, they may not be willing to hold their phone and watch your video for lo longer than a few minutes. So with that in mind, you might want to keep your uh, Twitter slash Periscope streams to no more than 10 minutes. Next up, we have YouTube. And of course, YouTube is the gold standard when it comes to video in general. People go to YouTube to look specifically for videos. It's not something that they just happen upon. It's something they're actually going to look for. So since people are already used to consuming video on YouTube, it makes sense to live stream there, if, especially if you've built up an audience on YouTube. Uh, YouTube has strong support for high quality videos, and now they support streaming up to 4K resolution. Uh, it's a good system for commenting slash chat, so you can uh, expect a good healthy chat going on during the live streams. And of course, the metadata support in the streams themselves and in the videos themselves make it easier for people to either discover your live streams or at least the videos uh, after the stream is over so they can go back and watch the replays. Uh, once the stream has ended, they remain def indefinitely in your YouTube account. So you can uh, always have them available to link to or embed in blog posts and things like that for people to be able to go back and watch. And most importantly, the streams can be scheduled in advance. This is something that uh, YouTube has taken the lead on and other platforms are just now starting to catch up. Speaking of other platforms, let's talk about Facebook. Facebook Live really took off in 2016. The company seems to have a strong desire to become the leading streaming platform. However, they've still got some room to grow. Uh, for example, Facebook streams are still limited to 720p, even from a desktop computer. And Facebook Live streams are promoted to users' timelines for brand pages, groups, and events that they follow. So that's a nice thing is that if people aren't going necessarily to look for a video from you or a live stream from you, uh, the fact that they follow you, the video can show up in the stream. And of course, they can be promoted with money. You can you know pay to promote your live stream so that more people can discover it and see it. Uh, Facebook Live interaction, though, is currently limited to comments as opposed to a traditional chat. And it's a nuance that um, once you've seen both in action, you'll probably prefer a chat when it comes to live stream uh, because uh, chatters can interact not only with you, the broadcaster, but also each other. 
whereas comments tend to be like a comment on any other post. They're there to be read, but you don't really see people interacting so much with each other in a comment section uh, like you do in a chat section. All right, so uh, users can though, now they can use the emojis that you probably have already seen on Facebook to react during live stream. So beyond just the thumbs up, they can give you um, uh, the happy face, the sad face, the angry face, the love. They can give you uh, just about any of the emojis that they have for regular posts. They can now tap on those and those will float across the broadcaster screen so that you can see that even if people aren't uh, giving you text comments, they are in fact giving you emojis. Next up is Twitch. Now, Twitch.tv is actually a you know, traditionally a gaming platform. However, it's a strong platform for live streaming, and they're now branching out beyond just gamers. So there is a creative there's a creative channel on Twitch with people streaming there every day, all day about creative things. And so Twitch is another channel you might want to look at to broaden your reach, especially among younger viewers. Um, like YouTube, Twitch has support for HD 1080p live streams. The quality is really, really good. And users can interact via a built-in chat system. And they have a unique advantage that the chat is also saved with the video, with the live stream for later replay. So, for example, if somebody missed the live stream and they want to go back and see it, they can also not only see the live stream or see the video, but the chat that took place during that um, live stream. Although Twitch has a huge following for gaming, the creative channel is still relatively new and growing. So you have to take that into account when you're deciding which platform to stream on. So speaking of which, which one should you stream on? And my answer is all of them. There's, there's no uh, disadvantage to streaming on any one of them. It will just depend on what type of audience you're trying to reach. Obviously, if you're trying to reach your existing audience, Facebook and Twitter have some advantages there because people are already following you on those channels uh, for anything that you're posting. And so now they'll see your live streams too. If you're expecting to reach a broader audience in general, YouTube might be the answer because people can not only see you that already follow you, but people can see you just by searching and seeing the metadata um, that you put in your description. And of course, Twitch, uh, being that uh, strong platform for streaming for gamers also um, ha poses the potential of reaching new viewers and new people. Required software and hardware. So even though you're going to be doing this from a computer, there is some software that's required and that software beyond what you're going to be demonstrating. The broadcasting software that we'll be spending most of the time talking about, although there are several different applications out there, We'll talk about OBS because not only is it a strong uh, broadcasting software, it's cross-platform, and most importantly, it's available for free. Uh, they keep it updated on a regular basis. It's like an open source project where people are constantly updating the app and making it better, making it stronger, and adding features along the way. You'll also need a decently fast Mac or PC. And when I say decently fast, um, the faster the better, not so much necessarily RAM, but more processor speed and more video card beefiness uh, is more important. Because you got to keep in mind, if you only plan on using one computer, that computer has to not only be fast enough to run the software you're demonstrating, but it has to also be run, running fast enough to stream live uh, in OBS. So speaking of that, if your computer is not fast enough um, or you just want a better experience, another option is to use two computers. In other words, one running OBS uh, with a video card attached or a video capture card attached to it so that you can plug in your demo computer or your presenting computer uh, into that second computer. And that way, um, the one you're presenting from is not being bogged down by the uh, broadcasting software. You'll also need a relatively fast internet connection. Um, the download speed is not nearly as important as the upload speed. You're gonna need, for most of these platforms, at least five megabits per second up on your upload speed to have a good experience for your viewers to be able to watch you lag free. So with that said, thanks for watching this getting started or this kind of overview of what live streaming from your desktop is. And check out the other videos that go into more details about how to set up OBS and how to configure it for each platform.